One of the reasons America is ranked so highly in the world is primarily because of the number of billionaires the great nation has produced. From the likes of Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, the list is just endless. And the stack of money, well, let's just say that it's the height of a whole skyscraper. America has held the record of having the most billionaires in the world. You can't blame them, because their 735 billionaires and counting are evident to show why they are at the top. These leagues of the super-rich have a combined net worth of a whopping $4.7 trillion from different industries and disciplines. Despite the fact that these billionaires have fascinating stories, today we will focus on one man. A man whose exploits have broken boundaries and stereotypes, and quickly became one of the most important names in the world. He is none other than Sam Zell, one of America's most renowned and much-respected billionaires. Zell's achievements over the years amassed him a significant number of accolades. The most important is being America's most prominent real estate owner. This is one video that will leave you intrigued and very impressed, so don't go anywhere. Before we jump into the life of Zell and expose some hard-kept secrets, do remember to smash that like button and hit that subscribe button for more amazing videos such as this. Now, let's get right to it. Zell is ranked by Forbes as the 438th richest person in the world, despite his $5.4 billion portfolio. However, that does not take out the fact that Zell is a king regarding real estate. Zell is one of the few self-made billionaires and the son of a Jewish-based immigrant who escaped from Poland and fled to Japan and finally to the United States just hours after Hitler's bombing of commercial roads in 1939. Zell's parents arrived in the United States in 1941 and gave birth to Zell shortly after that. Zell's parents, known initially as Rukla and Barak Zilanka, had to change their names to Rochelle and Bernard Zell so they could settle more comfortably in America. The Albany Park neighborhood is where Zell spent his youthful days. His father had done well for himself and became a popular jeweler in the community. His mother also had a small business. You could say that Zell picked up his business talents from his parents. At the age of just 12 years, Zell thought of a lucrative enterprise in 1953 which entailed buying copies of large quantities of Playboy magazines for 50 cents each and reselling them for more than a dollar. You might say Zell thought of his own e-commerce business before it even became a thing. Zell quickly learned the ropes of supply and demand and used that to his greatest advantages. During his collegiate years, Zell kept up his entrepreneurial endeavors. With his buddy Robert Lurie, he oversaw student housing for landlords while attending the University of Michigan. The first job they undertook involved 15 residences, but in reality, they invested a lot of effort into buying and renovating foreclosed homes with the intention of either selling them or renting them to students. By the time he earned his degree in 1966, Zell had overseen the management of 4,000 units in total, of which he had personally owned between 100 and 200. Before returning to Chicago, he gave Lurie his stake in the real estate management company. Zell joined a legal practice shortly after earning his law degree and passing the bar, but he left after just one week. He ultimately made the decision to turn real estate investing into his full-time job. After founding the company that would become Equity Group Investments in 1968, Zell persuaded Lurie to join him the following year. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, there was a sudden increase in overbuilding, contributing to the market crisis of 1973. The first affected property type was multifamily residential real estate, with other property categories rapidly following. Many commercial real estate loans went bankrupt, and many developers gave up on their plans. That gave Zell and Lurie an ideal chance to purchase premium properties for a reasonable price. The two had amassed a priceless portfolio of residential, commercial, and retail properties by the time the crisis was over. The building's value subsequently recovered and surpassed its prior valuation levels as a result of their long-term ownership of the portfolio. With the help of the monthly rental revenue the properties generated, Zell and Lurie paid their debt during this period. At the time, most real estate investors earned their money by flipping properties rather than building up rental revenue. Therefore, this method of investing was relatively new. After successfully turning undesirable properties into valuable ones, Zell decided to broaden the scope of his investment portfolio. He started buying businesses in the 1980s. The intriguing part was that his investing approach did not change. He explained in an interview that when everyone else was heading left, he turned right and built his fortune. He was purchasing office buildings in the late 1980s and early 1990s for 50 cents on the dollar. The market was so cheap that it made him always turn his head to see if there was someone to challenge him, but there was nobody. This made him even wonder if he had made a mistake. He also added that there was a strong link between courage and fear. Zell concentrated on taking up failing companies in an effort to turn them around. Since broadening Equity Group's range of investments, 
Zell has made investments in businesses engaged in a variety of industries, including rail, container leasing, passenger cruising, plastics packaging, agriculture chemicals, and industrial manufacturing. It had held a controlling stake in the Tribune Company, the owner of the Chicago Tribune and the Los Angeles Times. As Zell took the business private and piled on so much debt, it received harsh criticism for the transaction. In 2007, Zell gained notoriety when he sold the Blackstone Group, BX, the most prominent alternative investment manager in the world, his portfolio of 573 office buildings, known as the Equity Office REIT, for $39 billion. The deal was the most leveraged buyout in history at the time. Since it took place right before the subprime mortgage crisis and the ensuing real estate recession, it was also seen as a cunning maneuver in hindsight. Despite this, Zell amassed a billion-dollar fortune and quickly rose to fame as the godfather of real estate and a household figure. Even after Zell had amassed his billions, he still tried his best to steer future entrepreneurs on the right path, especially those wanting to venture into real estate. Zell gave some pieces of confidential advice over the years, and we have been able to compile a few. So if you are interested in walking the path of Zell, then it's best you grab a pen and paper and write down a few of these. Let's get started. Never risk what you cannot afford to lose. Although most individuals enjoy concentrating on the numerous upside opportunities or the amount of money they can make when purchasing a home, Zell prefers to begin by understanding all the potential drawbacks of a deal. He counsels people to never invest money they cannot afford to lose and to consider the following essential factors before investing. What would happen if everything went wrong? What steps might I take? Can I afford the price? Can I get through it? Risk is the ultimate differentiator. In Zell's opinion, the only genuine way to continuously produce above-average returns in his life and investing is by taking risks. With every venture, Zell makes it a point to fully grasp the risks involved and look for ways to reduce or neutralize their effects. Because of this, he has been able to buy properties at steep discounts that others thought were too risky to touch. Frequently, he is the only buyer for these assets. Replacement cost is still and has always been the most accurate indicator of a building's worth. The replacement costs of a real estate asset are more critical to Zell than the rent or comparable pricing because, in his opinion, the replacement cost of an asset defines the price of upcoming competitors. Therefore, if you are able to buy a property at a significant discount from its land value and construction cost, you could reasonably guess that someone who needs a property like that in the future will pay you what it will cost to recreate the property so they won't have to spend the time and effort building it from scratch. It all comes down to supply and demand. Finally, Zell believes that supply and demand govern the real estate market. Real estate does very well when there is no supply and poorly when there is an excess supply. In other words, for your real estate asset to command a greater price, it must be unique or in limited supply relative to market demand. When considering an investment in the future, bear this in mind. Zell is by far one of the most outstanding real estate entrepreneurs in modern history, and what's impressive about him is his consistency and determination to get things done. Zell believes anyone can make a billion dollars with the right vision and determination. If you are also planning to start a real estate venture, this video would have certainly helped you on the right path. Make it a point to join us in our next video. Till next time.